this video, I'm gonna run through five tips that'll make editing your videos a lot easier and a lot faster. So without wasting any time, let's hop into Premiere Pro. The first thing you have to learn and really set up to speed up your workflow is your keyboard shortcuts. Whether you choose to memorize some of the existing keyboard shortcuts already built into Premiere Pro, or you set up your own, this single step will save you hours of editing time. If your editing looks like this right now, then you're wasting a ton of time, and I was guilty of editing like this at one point as well. There are a ton of ways that you could set up your keyboard shortcuts. I'm gonna show you how I set up mine, but I encourage you to play around with this and really find a setup that works for your workflow. The ones that I use the most in my editing is Q, W, and E, and it's all about cuts. Let's start with Q. I've set up Q to trim before the playhead, and I think I use this one the most. You find the spot of the clip that you want the footage to start, press Q, and it essentially does a cut at that spot and moves all the other clips over. It's essentially a cut and a ripple delete all in one. W, I have mapped to add edit, which is just a cut at the playhead, and it's essentially just taking the razor tool at the spot that the playhead is at. E, I have set to trim after playhead, which is similar to what I've set Q up to do, but rather than deleting everything prior to the playhead, it deletes everything after and shifts everything over. Another useful one you'll wanna know is ripple delete. If you already have cuts made and all you wanna do is delete a specific clip and shift all the other clips back, Hold shift and press delete and it'll do that for you. Another way that you could do this is to just normally delete the clip by pressing delete and then select this tool here and click on the next clip. What this will do is it'll select everything forward after this clip, including the clip, and then you could just shift it back. I prefer the ripple delete. It's a lot faster, but you do you. Duplicating clips is another one that I use all the time. Rather than copying and pasting a clip, just hold the Alt key and click and drag a clip and it'll make a copy of it for you. Super easy. If you ever wanna move a clip up and down a track for whatever reason, all you have to do is hold the Alt key and press up and down on your keyboard and it'll shift the clip up and down the tracks. This next one's awesome if you have a slower computer or your footage is lagging when you play it back. If you ever tried to play back footage and it lags on you like this, this one will help you a lot, and it's creating proxies. I know it sounds complicated, but it's really not. A proxy is basically just a dumbed down version or a lesser quality version of your video clips that you can view during editing that is less taxing on your computer, making it playback smoother. When you export your footage, don't worry, you're still gonna get the full quality 4K or whatever it is that you shot your footage in. This is just so that you can play it back easier and faster on your computer. To create proxies for your clips, simply highlight the clips that you want to make proxies of in your project window. Right click and select create proxies. This pop-up window will come up and for format, make sure QuickTime is selected. For the preset, I recommend going with the Cineform Medium Resolution Proxy. This makes your proxies still a decent enough quality to view, but doesn't take too long to make the proxies. I'd also recommend checking this add watermark checkbox here so that when you're playing back your footage, you know for sure that you're looking at the proxy or the full resolution file. Your computer will now load up Media Encoder and start creating the proxies. It may take a few minutes to create the proxies, so go grab a coffee or a Zeeves while you wait. Hmm. Not sponsored, by the way. All right, now that the proxies have been made, let's see the difference it makes. To enable proxies, click this little icon here. It will turn blue when the proxy is on, and because I clicked the add watermark checkbox, you'll see this little icon in the bottom left corner. If you don't see this little icon here in your toolbar, click this little plus icon. Find the proxy icon and drag it onto your toolbar. So now that the proxy is on, look at the difference it makes in scrubbing through the footage. No lag whatsoever, and playing it back is nice and smooth. If you have a slow or old computer, this is gonna be an absolute must to edit your 4K footage, especially if it's shot in 10-bit or log footage. Staying organized is one of the best things that you can do to make your life easier as an editor. If you're just randomly dumping all of your footage into the project window, then I honestly don't know how you've made it this far in life. <laughs> no, but seriously, your edits will go way faster if you just keep things clean and organized. I arrange all of my projects into folders like this. 
one of the folders being called footage and inside the footage folder I separate the footage by the camera type so all of the GoPro will be in one folder the a7 IV in another folder iPhone in another depending on the project I might even go further than this and within each of these folders create subfolders for each day of the shoot outside the footage folder I also have an image folder a music folder and a sound effect folder. I'm not saying this is how you have to do it, but definitely create a system and some sort of file structure that you can carry with you between projects. Adjustment layers. These are my best friend in Premiere Pro. I use multiple of them on every video. When you are color grading or color correcting your clips with Lumetri Color, don't apply the adjustments directly to the video clip. Seriously, stop doing that. Instead, apply an adjustment layer to the layer above the clip and apply the color adjustments to that adjustment layer. This is a great way to apply the same color adjustments to multiple clips and it just makes color correcting and grading a lot cleaner and more organized. My typical video edit has three adjustment layers on it. I shoot in S-Log3, so my first layer will always be an exposure and white balance adjustment if I've messed up the exposure or the white balance in the camera for whatever reason. The second layer will be my Rec. 709 conversion preset, and the third adjustment layer is basically anything else that I add after this, so any curves or color grades or any further color adjustments that I make. Doing my color correction and grading this way makes things really clean and organized. Creating systems like this for yourself during an edit will literally be the difference between an edit taking three hours versus it taking eight hours, no joke. If you've ever had a song playing in the background that doesn't quite make it to the end of the footage, you can easily just extend it as long as you want. Just click this little icon here, select remix, and click and drag your audio clip as long as you want it. Premiere Pro will analyze the clip and essentially loop certain sections of the song to extend it out as long as you want seamlessly. You can also use this tool to shorten a song, but I don't think I've ever used the tool to do this. All right guys, that's it for this video. I hope that you learned something useful in this video. If you wanna keep seeing content like this, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on my next video. Also, feel free to leave a comment below with any topics that you wanna see me cover in the future. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.